there was candy. To partially quote good old Mulder and Scully from the X-Files, they're still out there. And no, we're not talking about alien invaders from another planet. Watch out! He's got his probe! We're talking about the sweet treats you may remember from your youth. And believe it or not, we found yet another 10 candies you forgot still exist. Part 3. That's it. Three. One of those three. Abba Zabba. Abba Zabba. You my only friend. Over the years, many chocolate and candy bars offered a plethora of interesting and tasty centers, the mold primarily taking the shape of caramel and, of course, nuts. But almost equally popular was the butter known as peanut butter. Peanut butter is definitely awesome, and many candy bars and their creators have profited from the creation of some pretty historic bars in the past. Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, anyone? This particular bar was a favorite of the king of rock and roll himself, Elvis Presley. M&M's are my favorite. Oh, mine too. It's true. After all, one of his favorites were peanut butter and banana sandwiches. The key ingredient being, well, it's pretty obvious by this point, or so we hope. Another candy bar you may or may not remember from back in the day was, in fact, the Abba Zabba bar. An Abba Zabba. <laughs> I don't know what that is. And although the name reminds us of yet another musical act from the long-lost 70s, the bar featured peanut butter as well. The bar contained peanut butter, of course, and taffy. It was first made in 1922 by Colby and McDermott. Yeah, you wish. The bar changed hands a few times, but is now manufactured by Annabelle Candy. They can be found online and in most stores west of the Rocky Mountains. Furthermore, if you've just gotta have one of these babies, you can always find them in certain novelty shops. Have an Abba Zabba, Marty. Thank you. Whatchamacallit. I'll whatchamacallit. Now. The Hershey Company has been around for a long time. It came about in 1894, and since its inception, the company has been popping out one treat after another, and most have been quite successful with consumers. One of their bars is, of course, the Whatchamacallit Bar, and it was first manufactured in 1978. Perhaps beyond the name, which makes it quite memorable, despite the fact that the name suggests memory loss in the first place. Furthermore, you'd think I'd remember a thing like that. Plus, who are you anyway? This treat was quite favorable, featuring peanut butter, of all things. Sound familiar? Of course it does, as peanut butter is probably the second most used flavor in candy bars the world over. And hey, what goes better with chocolate than peanut butter? Chocolate and peanut butter French toast? Heavenly. However, in 1987, caramel was also introduced, making this bar one that combined both peanut butter and caramel in tandem to bring consumers one explosive punch in the old flavor department. Now, with a bar that packed such a punch, you'd think people would be a little better at remembering the name, right? Of course, we're playing, as the name for this impeccably sweet treat is a play in and of itself. But worldwide knowledge of the bar dwindled slightly at the end of the 20th century, as television ads for the bar, in particular, weren't very dominant at the time. But despite the fact that many have forgotten about its existence, it's still in production and is being sold worldwide. And then I just sort of laugh at the, uh, um, the, whatchamacallit. Zot's Candy Fizz. You said plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a blast off it is. Zot's were first released in 1968. They were made by G.B. Ambrosoli, located in Italy, specifically Ronago. The original candies were a fuzzy variety with sour centers. Now, if described that way, candies like this are pretty much a dime a dozen, with many candy manufacturers trying their hand at the sour sweets we enjoy now and again. But many would argue that Zot's were and still are a tad different, establishing them as the genuine article and the one you should try to locate if you can. That's provided you get the old call from your taste buds for sour treats. Zots still exist and can be found in certain shops and, of course, online. But did you ever wonder why these candies fizz in your mouth in the first place? Of course you did, especially those of you with that old inquisitive noggin nagging at you every now and again. Well, it's the powder, the one you can find at the center of the candy. But it isn't just ordinary powder. No kidding. This is powdered seahorse. It consists of unspecified acids, and the combination of these reacts when it hits either water or an individual's saliva. Varieties offered included watermelon, cherry, apple, orange, blue raspberry, grape, and strawberry. Yesterday, 
Gee, that would have been stupid. <laughs> Chico stick. If you got a Chico stick, see, you got to be all together, see. Now, here's a pretty rare one many of you may or may not remember. But for those of you that do, you'll fondly recall munching on this special delight on those long summer nights walking home from the park. It was a tasty treat indeed, and many would swear that this one went the way of Harry S. Truman's run as president. But no, these two are still out there. This product has been manufactured since the 1950s, and it too contained peanut butter, believe it or not, as well as granulated sugar, toasted coconut, and of course, corn syrup. Really, what candy can be made without it? And it also contained a load of coloring. And when we say a load, we mean a boatload at that. It is a boat. They're also vegan, which is a plus side for many out there, and a sugar-free option is actually available. I do have a figure to maintain. Zero bar. Try zero, 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 zero. And while on the topic of strict diets, this one might be a treat that many of you may remember. However, despite the name, it sure packed quite a few calories in one packet. It contained caramel, peanut, and almond nougat, and was wrapped up in a white coating, which was what stood it apart from a lot of other brands out there. But this feature was also what perhaps kept people away from trying this one, as they may have feared that it was white chocolate. Now, white chocolate is something that is loved by many but those who hate it keep away from it like the plague. He says he's not dead. Yes, he is. I'm not and they probably felt the same way about this bar. It was first introduced in 1920, and initially, the name didn't come from a wanting to hint at a lower calorie count, but really, the name was intended to hint at a cool temperature, as in zero degrees. All right, everyone, chill. The campaign was successful, and many purchased the bar, despite the confusion at why a candy bar needed to be cool in the first place. After all, it wasn't an ice cream bar, but at the end of the day, a campaign campaign is a campaign, and you win some, you lose some. This one has proven to have stood the test of time and is still found out there, should you wish to spend some time in some cooler temperatures. No one said anything about cold. Bazooka Bubblegum. That's why I buy Bazooka Joe gum. It's like chewing a mountain. If we'd ask you to conjure up memories of your past, especially your childhood, we are almost certain that this particular item would make an appearance in the movie based on your life. Perhaps you'd buy units and units of bazooka bubble gum and keep them in your pocket for those quiet moments under a tree after a long baseball game with your friends. Or maybe even for those tender moments, watching a movie with that classmate you had an unbelievable crush on, and when you asked if they wanted a piece and they said yes, it felt like they'd accepted your proposal for marriage. You know what they say, love is blind. They still exist, obviously, or they wouldn't be on this list, but many have forgotten about them, likening them to the toys of their youth. The Topps Company in Brooklyn, New York, launched these puppies very soon after the Second World War ended, and the public couldn't have been more receptive, wanting to turn to times of happiness rather than times of war and peril. The marketing geniuses here hitting the mark perfectly. Perhaps equally popular to the taste of this gum were the wrappers, which included the Bazooka Joe comics, which which were always rather fun to read while the first juices from the gum flooded your mouth. Ah, there are more of those memories we talked about earlier. Bazooka Joga! Gold Nugget Bubblegum. Gold! <laughs> gold! Beautiful gold! And speaking of the bubblegums of our collective childhoods, how about this gem of the past? Or perhaps nugget of the past would be more of an appropriate term? We think so. The packaging here was probably even more fun than Bazooka Joe and the comic strips that came along with it. Here, a kid could really get carried away, lugging a bag full of these golden nuggets around like some lost treasure. Get back in there! Go, go, go! Go, go, go! Mine, mine, mine! <laughs> and all that was needed was a wee bit of imagination, and hours of pleasure could have been derived from one single bag. The interesting thing here was in fact also in the sheer volume of little nuggets in each bag. This provided the consumer with many options. A, eat only a few at a time, or B, get as many little nuggets in there as possible, the result being the most epically large bubbles worthy of the respect of your friends. Well, they're still out there. Some corner stores will have them, but these little treasures 
treasures can be predominantly found at online stores, and many of them carry these little bites of joy. So order away, our dear friends, and enjoy to your heart's content. And we say go on and shovel in as many nuggets you can at a time and blow, good people. Blow bubbles that'll make the bubbles of your youth seem like insignificant orbs of air. She's gonna blow. Zagnut bars. I can't decide between the Zagnut and the Hershey bar. Well, personally, I like the Zagnut. It's filling. Here's a special one from the annals of time, and one that is quite peculiar, as it contained no chocolate whatsoever, but it was still classified as a candy bar. Yet people were quick to correct you if you ever dared to label it a chocolate bar. It consisted of a peanut center and a coating of coconut. Ooh. Peanut. It is still released by the Hershey Confectionery Company, and although it isn't as popular as many of its other products, it still does okay out there on the market. It was first introduced in 1930 and has had some prominence in the entertainment industry. They shake it having appeared in film and television, films like 48 Hours, Hancock, as well as many others. You may remember me from such films as The Erotic Adventures of Hercules. Goo Goo Cluster. Uh, Goo Goo Gaga. This one, too, is over a century old, and we'd ask that you really register this detail, as a century is definitely a long time, and a product that's been around that long cannot be dismissed. It was first introduced in 1912 by the Standard Candy Company based out of Nashville. The bars contain marshmallow, nuts, and caramel. They are definite bites of joy, and they have been bringing said joy to the masses for many years. Zippity goo goo! The funny name given to this product was said to describe the caramel and marshmallow nougat specifically, alluding to the gooey factor involved. So it's more than understandable why people were going gaga over goo goo. That's a good, good, good cluster. Nerds candy. Oh, no! Well, these here were given quite the unfortunate moniker at their inception, but perhaps it was this in and of itself that only added to their popularity. Besides, it isn't the 80s or 90s anymore. These days, nerds are cool. And if you doubt that, just look at the popularity of the characters on The Big Bang Theory. You guys like this show? No. It's the worst show ever. Nerds Candy are currently owned by the huge conglomerate company, the Ferrera Candy Company. Nestle owned Nerds until 2018, when they sold the candy to Ferrera for a reputed $2.8 billion. Now that would buy you a lot of Nerds, much more than a lifetime supply. Can you imagine? Many of you who remember Pop Rocks will know that they represented some competition for these, but really, they stood apart and did well on their own merits, respectively. Perhaps the success of this particular product came at the hands of its ingenious packaging. The two colors of candy offered in the same box, only in two separate compartments. A novelty? Definitely. But at the end of the day, what is a product of candy without a certain playful novelty to go along with the taste of the treat at hand? Then again, that can be said for any candy from the past that still managed to stick around all these years later. Like a delicious frozen Charleston chew! You'll find more great videos right here. Just tap on that screen. And if you haven't joined our notification squad yet, show us some love and slam that subscribe button and click that bell.